Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Now What Next Steps podcast here at Malibu Pacific Church. Hey, if you haven't listened to this past week's sermon, stop what you're doing right now. Even if it's like feeding dinner to your kids, you want to hear this sermon, okay? And if you don't have kids, you're about to eat in and out. I don't know what you're doing. If you're driving a car, pull over, okay? Because this sermon was phenomenal. They always are. I mean, let's be honest. But like... It was just great, and this podcast will actually make a little more sense to you because uh, we do a kind of a deep dive. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, so keep listening to the podcast if you want to or go listen to the, the Sunday Sermon. Come back here and listen to this awesome conversation, and I'm really excited to introduce my friend and yours, everybody. This is Dr. Terrell Sales. Hey, everybody. How's everything going? Everybody, you can hear me? Am I good? Audio's good? You can hear me? Uh, Audio's good. Audio's good. Hey, if you're listening in the car and you don't have a visual, I highly suggest to watch the video um, as well. You can find that on the MPC website, malpacific.church, or on YouTube, Twitch, which is wild. I know I'm just making up words now, but not, you know, Uh, it's really cool because Dr. Terrell right now, he's at Warner Brothers Studio. They're doing this autobiography on him and this past Sunday. (laughs) It's already, he has a three movie Three movie deal. No, I'm just kidding. He really is at Warner Brothers. And I'm here in Malibu uh, overlooking the ocean. So we just have some like kind of cool backgrounds. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. Only like some did. of the most famous films have been filmed literally right behind you right there. I just did that a little shout out. on the video. It shows the giant Warner Brothers. It's one of the largest sound stages in the world. Um, they film things as Indiana Jones, Goonies. Anyways, and Terrell's right there. What are you filming today? I'm feeling blessed. I'm here with my daughter. She's actually shooting today. Yeah. Um, so I'm just here getting some work done and then uh, talking to the wonderful people of Malibu Pacific Church and whoever else is listening. At this point. That's so awesome. It's been good. It's been good. For sure. And no spoilers, but your daughter, what, what is she What is she filming on right now? She's actually background for Abbott Elementary season three. So Ooh. she's in Mrs. Barbara's class. Um, mm-hmm. So she's been having a lot of fun. And she loves coming here. She she uh, loves coming here a little bit more than real school. Absolutely. Um, we have to let her know, like, <laughs> real school is real. You know what I mean? This is, totally. This is, you know, so, so like, helping her understand. Her real school, though. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> helping her understand the differences between the two. Other than that, everything has been absolutely great. She loves it. Um, my wife loves it. Uh, we actually tag team. So I'm here today. And she'll be, she'll probably be here tomorrow again. That's awesome. So he uh, Abbott Elementary, check that out. And uh, you can see uh, Terrell's kids there, which is really rad. Just look for yep. them and uh, send them a screenshot saying, hey, I support Abbott, Abbott Elementary. Amazing show. But let's get to not the show. Let's get to the sermon from this past Sunday. I yes. ask you this question every time we get to have a podcast. Thoughts that were going through your mind and your stomach before you preach every time. Yeah, he's giving big eyes right now. What is that? Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts um, on? <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's nervousness. It's like legit nervousness because, uh, you know, no matter how many times you teach, uh, I'm a teacher by profession, by profession, but no matter how many times you teach or present God's word or whatever, there's always just this level of nervousness because mm-hmm. one, it's God's word. It's not yeah. mine. It's his. You know what I mean? And then two, it is God's people that you're yeah. talking to. You know what I mean? Like, and it's their hearts and it's their souls and it's all of these things that make us human. And I never want to abuse that power. I never want to uh, to be misrepresentative of, of what God is saying in his word. So it's always a very nerve wracking uh, type situation. It's 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 just one of those things. It's so stomachs turn it. I don't know how Pastor Andrew does it every single Sunday. Bye, baby. She's going back to school. Yay! Uh, yeah, yeah. On set. Um, so she has to do real school on set. So that's nice. what she's going back to, as well as you know, acting for 10 school. But that's the reason why I'm I'm most nervous is because of that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, so every every time, uh that's why you know I don't have much hair. It, it goes <laughs> because I'm stressing <laughs> out uh <laughs> regarding, you know accurately dividing God's word for God's yeah. people. So that's, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you could abuse that power, what would you do? No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding man. All right. <laughs> so it was so awesome. Just the way that uh, you opened up uh, the sermon of just calling people to, you know, the series is more, what are they searching for? Um, and one of my favorite things that happened during the sermon 
uh, was, you know, when you're preaching, man, there's so many more amens. Can you help us, you know, when you're not preaching, uh, help the congregation say amen, like actually have some like engagement a little bit too, because yeah. Like, yeah, and Presbyterians are the frozen chosen, you know, like we just sit there. We don't, are we supposed to say something? And my favorite was that your amazing bride, Portia, you were yeah. talking and she was like, she was like, amen. And you're just like, thanks baby. You know, just like, just great. And that right there was like such a beautiful moment, such a like, man, that's a beautiful marriage. That is like just partners for life. The entire congregation is just like, whether they were the first time you, you know, hearing you preach or anything like that too. Uh -huh. um, and people are brand new that were there on Sunday too. They were just like, Oh, this is real. Okay. It's not just like this. I'm reading from my notes. I've been doing this and here we go. Yeah. Like it was, I can't say like professional and real. It was just, it was authentic and real. And I think yeah. that that's the best way to, to preach from. Um, so here's my question to you. And I, I've been talking a little bit. No. How, how, how have you been able to balance that with your professor at Pepperdine as well? Mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. professional aspect with the authentic relational aspect and then bringing in God's word. Like how, what has been some things that has helped you kind of mesh and mold all those things to be able to preach? I think it's just life. Um, I ask God as well, because I, like I said before, it's his word and all this, but I also ask God, like, use my personality. Like you gave it to me. You gave me my personality. You gave me these gifts, like help me use those things in presenting your word as mm -hmm. well. Like help me glorify you through how you made me and who you made me to be and like how unique each and every person is. So I just ask God to like, help me use those things that you naturally put into me and that's that's just i try to after after all the nerves and you get up there and it's time to go like you just kind of settle into this is who god created me to be this is what he called me to do so let me like do it yep. you know what i mean so oh. it, it's as authentic as i can be minus you know the jitters and the nervousness that that comes along with all the other stuff so it's just that, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. constantly seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance and constantly asking God, like, just you be glorified in every aspect of this from your word, your people um, and me. You created me. You, you, you know what's in me and just let that be used to bring you glory in that moment. Amazing. First slide that you got went off of was we don't know what we truly need more of until we see clearly what you truly lack. Mm -hmm. Is that? Was, was that kind of like was that from the heart like i just felt like that was you're preaching like you know what i'm just gonna go out there i'm just gonna say it because i thought that that was again i'm saying authentic like it's like an organic word i'm just saying because i think that resonated completely in the room because there are some times that certain preachers will be like hey i have it figured out now you need to figure it out mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. you know what let's just be honest you don't like i don't know what i need I more of until I'm truly lacking of this thing. And I'm reminded or hit upside the head. Like wh where did that thought process come from? It came from pastor Andy's message on the woman at the well. Cause he told oh. us about the sermon series a while ago. And he was like, here's some things. And then, you know, and then he preaches the first sermon and yep. he was just talking about just like, she, she was thirsty. Totally. However, she didn't, she didn't know specifically what she was thirsting for. Yeah. But she she knew that it was something more that she needed and yep. she couldn't like articulate it. And Jesus was just so kind and so patient with her and just loved her through that whole process. And it was yep. at that moment during the during the during his sermon. And I know this is bad and I shouldn't do this. But I start like writing down all of these thoughts that were coming to my mind about like, that is so true. We don't know what we need more of yep. until we have a very clear understanding of like where we're lacking. We think yep. we we think we know what we need more of. Yep. And sometimes we ask for those things, but that's not what we really need. It's, it's in our weakness that God has made strong. It's in our weakness and where we're actually humble enough to say, you know, I really need help in this way. You know what I mean? So Ab that's where that thought came from. Absolutely. I love that. And then immediately uh, you went into the church's uh, admission vision you know, of like, hey, it's a church for everybody, but the goal is to be inspirational in everything we do to encourage people to explore faith and take a step with Jesus. And you just yeah. hammered on that, man. Like, 
you you knew that kind of like the back of your hand. Like I don't know. It just felt like, hey, no, I'm on board like with my with with my church. Like this is my church. This is my people. This is this. And it to me, it was like, man, this is amazing. Because if we're all in that same, you know, journey, that same bus kind of a deal, and it's like, hey, everything we do here at MPC needs to be inspirational, right? We want to inspire people to mm-hmm. explore mm-hmm. faith. We're not even saying like, you have to be a Christian right now, like you dummy. Kind yeah. of, like, no, explore it. You know, explore, mm-hmm. this is a safe place to do that. And mm-hmm. our goal is to take a step with Jesus. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. like there's a bunch of different type of religions, faiths, et cetera. But we know that's like, take that step with Jesus because that's that's the right one. Like that, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. It's not any any boo-boo. It's not like, a, oh, you're dumb for doing these things. It's No, it's like, we want to encourage you to take that yeah. step. Trust me, when you take a step with him, this is when true transformation happens. And so when you're yeah. out from that, it was phenomenal. And then you went into, um, I, I loved the iceberg image, man. Loved the iceberg image. You were so, like, I actually got a couple of photos of you just being like, what? Like, <laughs> listening to it, like, I have my arms up right now and just, like, big face, like, Look at the iceberg. The iceberg yeah. image is basically the top of the iceberg versus what's down below. Yeah. Uh-huh, All right. Uh-huh. So, yep. so without talking about the Titanic or James Cameron's finest film or one <laughs> of them, where did that image come from? Like, where did, where was that? Like, also because because you were like, let's do this, do the 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 iceberg thing. It's awesome. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, it comes from uh, education. So I teach teachers, right? So that's yeah, my profession. Do. And in every teacher classroom, you'll see that iceberg image. And it'll say like behavior of the student and then it'll say like reasons for the behavior. Mm-hmm. And most of, most oftentimes that opens educators eyes because you're, you, you're trying to manage so many aspects of the classroom. I need to make sure that my students are on task. I need to make sure they're actually learning. I need to make sure this, that, and, the other. and then some student is, you know, kind of quote unquote misbehaving, right? Yeah. Within that space. And it may, and usually just attack the behavior, like quiet the behavior. But the real educators or the teachers are the ones who understand that students are not just students, they're human beings. Yep. Right. And there's so many things that could have happened prior to that student coming into the classroom that are underlying reasons for this behavior or sometimes students can't necessarily even articulate what the issue is yeah. verbally. Yeah. So they behave in a particular way. It's, it's them like calling out for an unmet need. Oh, Really quick. All right, everybody. Just because we're on uh, crazy locations right now, we did have a little bit of audio issues, but we're going to jump right back into the podcast. Here we go. Okay. So, yeah, I'm a teacher who teaches future teachers. Mm -hmm. And that image of the iceberg, which I love, because honestly, I'm not joking or joshing you. If you ask my wife, Titanic is our favorite movie. We probably watch it at least like six or seven times a month. Just, just, you know, just to be honest, it's just, it's just great. But anyways, so I have the, the, the vision of the iceberg. And the thing about it is in every teacher education classroom, you'll probably see that image. Mm-hmm. And what it's trying to teach us is that at the top is like the smallest part of the iceberg. Yeah. And at the bottom is, it's under the surface, right? Yeah. And it's huge. And usually you'll see a behavior mm-hmm. within the classroom. Mm-hmm but you don't see the underlying reasons for that behavior. Totally. And usually the behavior that a student is exhibiting within the classroom, because sometimes they're, they don't have the vocabulary sometimes to articulate exactly the emotions that oh, they're feeling. Good. So, you know, the behavior is, 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 is their attempt to communicate an unmet need. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to teach teachers to see like, yes, that is a behavior. However, what is the underlying reason for that behavior? Yeah. And how can we address that? Because it's not just about changing the behavior. It's about meeting the specific need. Nice. And I love that image. However, on the iceberg, it does bottom out, right? We saw oh, that yes. it bottoms out. Yep. But the image of the tree, we yep. see that like some issues that we have, I'm walking by some trees right now. Right? Some oh, small trees. <laughs> there you go. That wasn't planned. That wasn't planned. That but, was that was a good moment. But the trees, what, what it does is the roots are constantly digging deeper and deeper and deeper, right? Yep. I think that's that's a better image of some of the issues that we have. The outside might look great. You might see the leaves, right? 
like right behind you. That tree looks looks great. You see the leaves, you see the trunk, you see all of those wonderful things. And it can sometimes look like everything is okay. However, deep down, there's some issues that have to be un- uprooted in order for us to get to what it is that we actually need. So that that's why I use both because one is really familiar. We've yep. seen it before, <laughs> behavior, underlying issue. But sometimes with a tree, you can have fruit, you can have leaves, you can have all totally. of these wonderful things that appears that everything is fine. Mm-hmm. But deep down, there's really like something, there's an issue there. So I love that image as well. And that, you know, the Lord Jesus is a wonderful gardener that can really like uproot some of those things that are that are deep down within mm-hmm. us. So now we can actually articulate what it is that we need. Totally. Uh, one of my favorite things, you were talking about the tree and even the tree behind me right now. It's literally like dumping all of its seeds and saplings right now. I mean, I'm showing a bunch of like my computer is literally like just like covered with all these. Uh-huh. Little, I've only been sitting here for like 10 minutes and it looks yeah. like Andrew or like something like that uh-huh. falling all up in here. And I'm like, wow, this tree seems really healthy because I'm literally like hitting all these little seeds coming off of me. But I know deep down this tree is actually having root issues and we might have to remove yeah. it. Yeah. Which is yeah. Wild. And that's a beautiful analogy of like yeah. what what happens with us. You know, yeah. it's a beautiful analogy of what happens with us. So yeah. that's why I really like that image of the tree. Totally. What is it deep down in our hearts that can be unearthed for us to then be able to articulate what it is? And yeah. usually the Lord leads us to that point because sometimes we can't see it because it's really, really deep down. That's so true. Uh, I loved later on you go into the story of the boy possessed and um, and you know, the, the, the father was like, you know, the, this, this demon, this thing has tried to kill my, my, my son thrown in the, you know, into the river, you know, mm-hmm. in flames, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And the dad wasn't blaming the son and his actions in that he was saying, help me with my unbelief, mm-hmm. you know? And I think yeah. that that was one of those things, like that was the point that you just got that so across so clear, or it was like, Help me with my unbelief. Like, that's why I'm here. And you said, Jesus is like, I already know what you're thinking. I already, I already like, oh, shocker. It's not, it's not, but it's you who's saying, help me in my unbelief. And the words that has stuck with me, man, for the last couple of days is that you're like, Jesus and Jesus was like, now I can do my thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, that is awesome. Yeah. 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 Because the thing is, like, there's no issue that, that he cannot solve. Right. Totally. He's, he's got to deal with it, with that issue yeah. because of course. But that is sometimes he uses those things to bring us to. him, Yeah. Right. Yep. That's what happened. He that issue was there. He loved his child. It's, his son isn't the issue. Totally. Right. It's 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 this 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 problem, this demon, yeah. this this thing. And I think sometimes um, we can focus on that aspect of that historical narrative which yeah. i think is it is important you know what i mean because what's yeah. more precious to us than our children totally but jesus is like i can i can save i can heal your child but yeah. there's something deeper that i need to deal with at this point in time within you i love you both but i need to deal with you right now totally. so that's that's mm-hmm. the part mm-hmm. that i really wanted to pull out that's why i really love the um, yeah, I use Mark because Mark shows all of it. Yeah. It talks about the transfiguration, yep. it talks about the crowds meeting him. It has the, the father yep. um, trying to heal his son and get his yeah. son healed and all that stuff. But what Mark did that's different, it engaged in that dialogue between Jesus and the father. And I think it just pulled out a whole different element that kind of spoke to every aspect of that historical narrative is it was unbelief. Yeah. It was something that was, <clears throat> you know, Jesus just showed his disciples, like, this is who I truly am. Yep. And then he comes down and then like the guy is coming in. And, and the, the thing is, I don't want the dad to be like this evil person because he's just like all of us. He's like, look, I do believe I do. Yeah. But there's something in me, like help my unbelief. And that was totally. that honesty that vulnerability yep and that truth you know what i mean and i think yep. that's how jesus wants us to come you yep. know and that that kind of final slide before you went back to the roots and the tree again the uh desperation 
brings leads about to clarification. Clear, uh-huh. Leads to clarification. I, I I kid you not, man. There was this Ooh. moment, like in the sanctuary, people are just like, "That's that truth bomb, right? That's just that's just truth, right?" Yeah. The, and I think everybody has felt that, or has been around somebody who's felt that losing somebody they loved. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people tend, you know, you, I know a lot of people who have passed away. Um, sadly, or for good, you know, what they're in heaven now. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, they're like, I wasn't a believer before, and now that I'm here, I, I I'm praying to God, you know, like mm-hmm. it's just that desperation, even though their entire life they're like, eh, kind of a deal. Uh, and it reminded me, this is gonna be like totally like a left-handed comment, but it's like a it reminded me of the Simpsons. Uh, there was an episode where Bart becomes a preacher. Um, yeah. totally ridiculous. I know, <laughs> totally ridiculous. But there's a preacher there, and he was like, "I don't think you're really doing the word right." Like, how, uh, do you believe you're going to be going to heaven? He's like, "No, actually, I don't believe in God." And he's like, "You're preaching. Do you remember? Do you remember this? I don't know if you remember." And Bart, Bart was like, "No, no, no I'm going to do what most people do. On my deathbed, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I believe, and I'll be fine.'" And the preacher goes, "Wait, you can do that?" Like it was just like this quick comment kind of a deal, and I was just like. <laughs> You know, like I, so I, you know, I asked the question of like, you know, those, there's people who do that and find Jesus in those, even those uh-huh. last moments. And I believe, I believe in that. I'm going to have yeah. to. So yeah. the question is then, so then why should we believe in Jesus earlier or God? Why can't we just live this, you know, this sinful life? And I think you nailed it because we know that there is a problem. I think we mm-hmm. sit there, even if you're a non believer, you can be like, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. But it's there's always, there's going to be problems. And it's like, I don't know where those problems come from. I manifest them. I Whatever. It's karma. It's I mean, whatever the thing, whatever you want to call it. But it's like, you know, there's issues, but you also know that there is a, there's a, 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 a problem solver, which is God. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. And I think that you just, you hit that really well at the end right there of just like, hey, don't make it till you, it's like complete desperation to find that clarification. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. you did that, the invite to be like, Hey, you can find that without being at that desperation. I felt like pretty, pretty clearly, to be honest. Yeah. And I just say thank you to that, you know? Oh man. Um, Do you feel like the Lord? Absolutely. Do you feel like you find, you find Jesus more in the desperation than the. Yes, I do. Okay. Which I don't like. I I want (laughs) to be like, I want to not always have to go to that point. But the thing is, he knows he knows what will get our attention he knew oh, that's good there could there could have been a myriad of things going on in that man's life but he knew what would get his attention that was his son and yeah. seeing his son suffering and seeing like like he's probably gone here gone there gone to this person going to that person like you see he comes he's like i went to your disciples they couldn't do anything like he's frustrated Right. Yeah. He, he's like frustrated, but it's not like a evil, bad frustration. It's just like, I'm at my wits end. Totally. I, I don't know where else to go. And even though I'm coming to you, yeah. there's still a certain level of unbelief that still needs to kind of be worked out. And, yeah. Right. Even though, I, and, the, and that's the thing, so many people come to church for whatever reason. You know what I mean? There's a myriad of reasons why people come. And I Jesus is well. so, yes. yeah, he's so loving. He'll use whatever is necessary yep. in order to, like he said, he'll leave the 99 in order to go find the one. He'll do whatever is necessary in order to bring you to that ultimate conclusion. And sometimes it is desperation, but within the beauty of Christ, it leads to clarification. We're able to see him more clearly and be able to, to finally come to that resolve, to that solution, that he is the answer to everything. So good. So good. Well, one last question before we wrap up. But if somebody were to hear your sermon, what would be the one thing? Like, just walk away with one thing that you'd be like. I know there's like, dude, there's there's hundreds, hundreds of things, and God works in all those things. But like your own, like, if you put it on the line and you listen to yourself, but it wasn't you. You know, it was like somebody uh-huh. who's giving the exact same sermon. What would be the one thing that like you would walk away with it or hope to walk away with? I think it's that that first point of like we don't necessarily know what we need more of until we see clearly what we lack. Um, and it's because I just think in life we're always trying to accumulate more, like more of something, more relationships. Uh, when I was in sin, it was 
you know, sex. It was, it was, it was marijuana. It was anything that would like make my mind feel good, or it could be pride. It could be accomplishments that makes you feel a particular way about yourself. It could, it could be anything. It could be acts of service. You know what I mean? It could be something that's, that's seemingly good, but totally. it, you're, you're trying to fill this void. Yeah. And there's a God sized void in our, that he has placed in our heart. I believe Pastor Andy talked about that as well when he was talking about Solomon. There's mm-hmm. a God sized void that's placed into our hearts like eternity, right? That's what Pastor Andy was saying. Eternity is written in our hearts. Yeah. That I can't, there's, I can't fill it with anything. There's nothing on this earth that is made that can fill that void. Yeah. Only God can. But I can't come to that realization until I understand that there's nothing on this earth that can fill that void other than God. So if I had one thing for people to, to, to walk away with is that you're searching. Everyone is. Everyone's searching. And we fill it in a myriad of ways. But it takes that level of clarification to see, like, there's nothing that I can do is like, like uh pastor Andy said, it's all, it's all meaningless ultimately yeah. until I have that void filled. And the only person that can fill that void, the only person that can bridge that gap is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the bridge. He is the one that fills that void, fills that gap. So that's, that's, that's what I would, that's the last piece that I think if I wanted anyone to walk away with anything, it would be bad. Yes. love that love that love that uh hey so uh if you haven't checked out the sermon yet by all means please go listen to that sermon uh terrell has past sermons here too man this is like number what seven now yeah seven or eight yeah yeah man all right so nine's coming up next week 10 after that 11 after no i'm just kidding uh it's gonna be great we have we're ending our more series this next week uh, Amy Pendergraft is going to be preaching, closing out the series. And um, we're definitely going to be hearing more from Terrell in these months to come as well. With that said, uh, if you want to take out Dr. Terrell to Nobu uh, to pick his brain more about the sermon, by all means, uh, you can reach out to me, Joel at Malibu Pacific dot church, uh, Joel at Malibu Pacific dot church. And he'd love to go to that little, if you just want to get a quick little meal or something like that. Just a small bite. Just a small, just a little something, you know, he, if you want to be for real, he's he's uh pretty available. Not pretty available. He's a very busy dude, but he loves yeah. taking time. I available, yes. He's he's traveling. Yeah. He's doing all the things. He's at Warner Brothers right now. It's wild, right? Uh, but Super I wild. This guy loves to talk to people. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or hand gestures for episodes coming up, let us know, and we'd love to answer those. Uh, we'll see you on yeah. Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. on site or online. And Terrell, thank you so much for all that you bring, man, and just the man that you are. Thank you, thank you for having me and. Allow me to be who I am because this truly is not just a cliche. It's a church for everybody and for every story. Legit. Legit. We didn't even have to pay him money to say that. Anywho. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this podcast with a friend and the sermon with a friend who needs to hear it. Bye. And we'll see you on Sunday. Sunday.